Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we'll just, we'll roll right in. So migrating from Islandora 7 to 8, that's what we're uh, talking about today. Um, this is a fairly high priority for us at the foundation. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone who uh, is on 7 gets brought forward to 8 as painlessly as possible, um, which is difficult considering that both, you know, Drupal and Fedora had some, some really major, major uh, changes going on. Um, so everything is quite a bit different, but nonetheless, we have managed to bridge that gap uh, quite well, I think. Um, so here, if you wanted to move from Islandora 7 to 8 today, you basically would have uh, two options. Um, you can pull directly from your 7x. That's that's what I'm going to show off right now. That's my great 7x um, claw is is the name of the the code. Um, or you can take this as an opportunity to clean up your exported uh, metadata and then uh, import that into 8. So that would be kind of a technique where you would export stuff and get it into open refine and reconcile things and clean it up. Um, and then you can just spit out a CSV from there and you can use our CSV migrate tools, uh, which I've also done uh, a video on. Um, so we're gonna focus on pulling directly from the 7X. So this isn't really a metadata uh, cleanup exercise. This is just like a straight extraction uh, to move everything over um, as is as losslessly as possible. Uh, so no matter which uh, path you take though, if you're migrating in, um, really any migration. The, the main requirement here uh, is that you need to know your metadata. You need to know what's coming over. I mean, obviously you need to know the extent of what's coming over so you can verify it's all there, but you need to know what's within that metadata because there's always, you know, surprises. Um, for this migration in particular, for 7X, you really need to know what's in your solar index um, and you need to know your XML metadata and, you know, whatever, um, schema you're using, you know, mods, PB core, et cetera. Um, but you need to know that because you need to know those things in order to hack stuff out to get it in. And everything that we're working with is going to require um, like a, a solar field name or an XPath in, in XML. So that's why I'm saying you need to, you need to know this metadata. Um, you have to, before anything, kind of a step one here, you have to configure Drupal 8 to accept your metadata. And we'll go through an example of this a little bit later. Um, but to get you started here, we're just gonna work with the default metadata profile, Islandora defaults. And this roughly, I'm, I'm, you can't see me, but I'm using air quotes. This roughly approximates um, basic mods. So this is our attempt to implement the suggestions that are being handed to us from um, the metadata interest group. And we are most of the way there. I would say this gets us close to uh, what they're suggesting we do. And we are on the path to fully implementing it. Um, but because it approximates basic mods, it means that it will work very well for the purposes of, of this demonstration where I'll just be pulling from a, from a vanilla um, 7X vagrant. So uh, most of the... Uh, administrivia, let's call it, of adding all of these fields and setting everything up, uh, this will already be kind of done for you. And we'll do a, an example of doing just a single field uh, later on. Um, the other thing is you have to configure Drupal 8 to import your metadata. That is uh, step two, let's say. Um, and this leads us to the migrate API. So everything that we're doing to migrate you in, this is all tooling that's built off of um, Drupal's migrate API, which is part of core. It's how they move people from Drupal 7 to 8. Um, and there is a larger ecosystem around it. A lot of um, vendors use it for their products, for their projects, excuse me. Um, and so it's, it's uh, well used, although a bit, uh, on the fringes, so it's not super well documented, but once you get some experience with it and you learn the ropes, uh, it's, it's definitely not so bad. Um, so what the way these migrations look uh, is that they're 
YAML files, everything that's configuration in Drupal 8 is eventually YAML. So they are really these YAML files and they follow this pattern of, it's called ETL. It's a kind of a programmer jargon. Um, it means extract, transform, and load. So the idea here is that you pull your data from somewhere, this is R7X, you do stuff to it in order to get it into the correct form, and then you load it in, into the destination. And these steps individually are all different plugins. I don't want to get into the weeds here, but uh, as far as programming is concerned, it, it just means that these things are like swappable uh, little guys that we can kind of uh, brick together in order to, to build a migration. And so that's really what you're doing. You build up this YAML that in essence is calling these plugins in order to do to do the work. Um, so we can kind of take a, a closer look at these real quick, although it'll make more sense when we actually have one in front of us. Um, but uh, essentially source plugins here, you can see these will contain, and it varies what's in them, but these will contain everything that you need in order to actually um, get the body of data and break it into like units of work. They call these rows. It doesn't necessarily need to be a row. Um, but you kind of need to give it everything it needs in order to pull out all the data. So this one here is, is meant to work with a CSV. And so we have to provide things like the delimiter and how many header rows we have, um, stuff like that. You can also define constants in a source plugin and that's sort of just like hard coding something. Um, there are source plugins available for JSON data, XML data, CSV data, and you can use files that are actual files on your server, or you can uh, pull from the web, and that includes um, calling out to REST APIs, so it might not actually be a file, it might just be like the response from a web API or something, but you can use that too. Um, and, and the way you extract the data, it's pretty straightforward depending on which of these formats you have. If it's CSV, you need to know column names. If it's JSON, you need to know like the key in, in the JSON um, for an entry. And if it's uh, in XML, you need to know the X path in order to extract out the data. Um, and, and we take advantage of all of this stuff in various uh, ways and different parts of the stack here. Um, but for Islandora 7, we wrote our own custom source plugin that piggybacks off of these. And um, what it does is it works with JSON data from Solar. So it requests, it makes a Solar query through um, JSON's, or excuse me, through Solar's endpoint and just parses that. So it's not actually a file, but it's like, you know, the query results. Um, and it uses that to get a list of everything that's going to be migrated. And then for each individual thing that gets migrated, um, it pulls out its voxel from, from Fedora and does stuff. So you can you uh, grab all of the documents and can grab all of their um, flattened metadata from the solar. But if you need the hierarchical data that's organized and you need to like line things up like attributes to elements and stuff like that then you can just use the xml and we end up doing end up doing both when we migrate over from islandora 7. Um, so that's source plugins process plugins are kind of as you think they process the data and it's used from everything from you know formatting dates to manipulating strings and then even some kind of cooler things like um, looking up other entities, uh, finding other entities that have been migrated over. Um, and if it like fails the lookup, then you can tell it that it needs to generate them if they don't exist yet. So you can, you can play a lot of tricks here with processing. Um, you can use it to clean up your data as well. I said we're not really cleaning anything up here, but uh, if you were going to attempt to do it um, in the migration itself and not as part of like a pre-processing or a cleaning phase. Um, this is this is where you would do it. Um, and you can take these process plugins. Each plugin is essentially like an operation on some data and you can chain them together. So it has the ability for you to like pass the results from one to the other to the other. And so you can kind of mush things into shape here. Um, this is an example of uh, applying subjects to a piece of uh, metadata and the source of it is a pipe delimited list of like subjects. And so what I'm saying here is you can look, um, 
skip it if it's empty, but then, and this is PHP, you explode it, you break it apart on the pipe, and then for each thing that you got when you broke it apart on the pipe, um, you generate a subject taxonomy term for it. So you can see in this YAML, um, it's a little odd, but you can still essentially read what's going on. It's kind of like a, um, in programmer terms, we call it a domain specific language. It's a, a DSL, if you will, and it's just, um, kind of like a, a YAML layer on top of some scripting. So it kind of smooths out um, some things. So it's still very technical, but it's, it's not code exactly. Um, the last part of a, of a migration is that you need to take the process results and you need to put them somewhere. This is the destination plugin. So this, the, the ET and the L, this is the L. Um, and it really comes down to what type of entity are we making in Drupal 8? Uh, are we making a node? Are we making a media? Are we making a file? Like all of these things will require different destination plugins and you can configure them all um, individually. Um, so as I kind of hinted at earlier, every time you need a different destination plugin, you're basically making another migration file. And so a full migration is really a sequence of these smaller migrations. So all of the little bits and pieces that you want to extract, you can convert into, into different entity types and, and, and go from there. So this migration that we're gonna walk through, it's not just grabbing over like the metadata and the description and the actual file itself, but we're actually taking a look at that metadata and inspecting it and doing things like, um, instead of having multiple entries in multiple metadata files for like an author of multiple works, we will actually go and analyze it. And for each author we find, we'll go make an author person and then um, it will deduplicate all of those entries and stuff like that. So by making all of these kind of little targeted migrations, um, you can say what depends on what, and then you can kind of just run them all as a bundle or run them um, piece by piece as you go to make sure you pull out every, every piece. Um, but when I say we're running a migration, uh, I guess contextually, uh, you got to be paying attention because um, I may be talking about an individual file, but in reality, a full actual, like as a project migration is, is many of these, of these small files. So uh, the, as I hinted at earlier, we, we built a tool for uh, migrating stuff over uh, using the, the migrate API, this project is called Migrate 7x Claw. It is, we have recently declawed Islandora 8 and have removed uh, the claw kind of working title from, from everywhere, everywhere except here. So maybe the next time I give this presentation will be called something else, but for now it's still called Migrate 7x Claw. Um, and so what does it do? Um, so I kind of mentioned this earlier, it queries Solar to get a list of objects to migrate and you control this, you can set the query so you can hone in on specific spots or attempt it on just like one object to see what happens, um, stuff like that. So you can kind of test it out in smaller doses before taking a, a larger plunge. Um, and then for each object, it retrieves its Solar document, it retrieves its Foximal document, um, it pulls over every data stream that it can find inside the Foximal and, and wires it up in Drupal 8 entities. And then it extracts metadata um, from the XML data streams that it can find and it will make other entities. Um, and I guess as a last one I should put it in there, it will also um, set metadata, descriptive metadata from the, from the solar index as well, if you want. Um, but that is the rough, uh, kind of process that happens. So you give it this query that defines the scope of what it's going to try to pull over. And then from there, it's going to just kind of repeat this process um, for, for each of the things that it finds for each result in that query. Um, so let's see, we're 15, 17 minutes in. Okay, let's try. So I have already set up an Islandora 7x uh, site. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. Okay, so here is my 7x site, and if you want to check it out, um, in the in the uh, slides, I, I link out to a zip file that I ingested here. If you want to check it out, though, I'll show you the results 
Um, but if you want to repeat, you can just use the same zip file that I did. And it's just a, a, a batch of images using um, the zip importer. And these are just a bunch of royalty-free images that I got off of this site called, called Pexels. Um, and it's all of neon signs. And if we go look at them, we can check out their metadata. We'll go inspect their mods. And it's got somewhat filled out metadata. So everything's got a title. And here we've got some, um, uh, some agents, uh, as we call them, in, uh, in Islandora 8 here. But we've got a, a collaborator and a publisher for this, for this picture. Um, it's got a type of resource. Uh, genre, which I just made up, which is what's in the sign there. And then uh, some publication information. And then we go on down and we've got subjects and geographics and a, and a lot of stuff there. So it's, it's fairly filled out. This is just the basic mods form for a basic um, Islandora 7 basic image object. Um, so it's very, very vanilla, and that's what we're working with. And these things are meant to line up. So that basic content type in Islandora 8 is kind of meant to line up with this. Um, that's what we're trying to do is to get that data over as, as easily as possible. Um, but throughout this process, all this stuff will kind of come over as is. But then you see here, and that's really the difference between pulling from solar and pulling from the XML. Um, when you have this hierarchical information um, where you need to get um, the name and the role and you want to line that up with something like here the attribute in xml would be like corporate um type equals corporate for a for a name element in mods um when you want to do that and work with all that stuff together that's when you kind of parse it out from the xml um but anyway so just a good example we'll be kind of pulling at it from from all sides to get all this information over um so let's look at our islandora 8 so our Islandora 8 is empty. Um, there's nothing. Let me, let me hop back to the presentation here and make sure I don't get too far ahead of myself. Um, so that was the content. OK, first thing I'm going to do is, well, I've already done this, so we don't, you don't have to watch me do it. But um, you need to download and um, install slash enable the module. And so the way we recommend you do this is with Composer. So um, if you have your site, um, you can do this if you have shell access. If not, you know, ask your sysadmin to do it. Um, but you just compose or require Islandora Migrate 7x Claw. It will pull it in. If you look very closely, you'll notice that it actually pulls in Took. And so we actually are using Took to talk to your Fedora 3 in order to parse out the Foxmo and get all the data streams and stuff. Um, and we're working with it within the Islandora 8, which is kind of neat. Um, and then you can install it using Drush. So just Drush in and then the name of it here. And what I'm doing here is I'm saying you install this feature because what it is is we have actually like the code and then the configuration and they're separate. So there's the, the plugins and those are Migrate 7x Claw and then the feature, which is the migration configurations. That's this Islandora Migrate 7x Claw feature. Um, and so by just enabling this, it enables them both. But you need to, to download and install it first. I've already done that. Um, but I will show you how to configure so this is one of the things that changed uh, before this had to be all done within the YAML and you were going and editing each YAML. And so there's like 10 different files and you had to change this thing and, and, and everything. And you know, it wasn't so bad with find and replace, but um, it was still uh, not the greatest of user experiences. So now we do have an actual configuration form to set this up and it will do all of the dirty work for you. Um, so if you want to go check that out, um, you can go to configuration, and here we have Islandora migration settings. So if we go there, um, we can set the, the URL for Fedora, the username and, and password credentials, um, where the solar URL is, and then also that solar query that I mentioned before that sets the scope of the migration. Um, so my stuff is running on a weird port. I don't know if you noticed here. I've got 22. Um, 02 for Apache, but let me see what I've got for Tomcat. And it tells me over here. Oop, hang on, I got to get my screen share thing to go away. All right. Uh, I am on port 2200. So that is what I'm going to add in here. So let's turn this into 2200 and this into 2200. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put my, because this is fresh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the username and password. So we'll save. Okay. So now we've configured it to look at uh, our Islandora 7 instance. And we have here the query uh, that we're doing in order to pull stuff over is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, although a little long, uh, we are getting all children of the basic image collection and we're getting the basic image collection itself. So that is the, the scope of what we're going to, to pull over. So, so this guy, we're pulling all this stuff over, okay? Um, let me get back to the presentation here. Okay, so we're gonna run it. So you can run it through a UI and there is a UI. Um, and unfortunately, you have to run them one by one in the user interface. So I'll show it to you real fast, but um, to run all of them at once, like the whole kind of kit and caboodle, it's a lot easier to use Drush. So uh, unfortunately, this is one of the situations where it really was best for me to, to do this in the command line. I couldn't avoid it. Um, but anyway, let me show you that UI that you can see. And uh, we will use this later to run just a single one. Um, but you can check it out. If you go to structure, um, you have migrations. And now we have all these Islandora objects. And so it'll list out all the migrations for you. Um, so let's try to run it. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this in. Well, hang on, you gotta get into, into Drupal. So the way you run it is you say drush, here's mem, that's short for migrate import. And you have to say who's running the migration. Here I'm just saying user ID is one, I'm just saying admin um, is running the migration. And then uh, you tell it the group. So the name uh, of, of the group is Islandora7x. So we're gonna run it. So it's gonna it's gonna take a moment. Uh oh. I didn't save. Excuse me. See, getting ahead of myself. All right, let's go back. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> uh, we're doing it live, folks. Uh, okay. I just ran through this five times in a row. Oh boy. All right. Uh, let's see what's wrong here. We'll write the ship and we'll, we'll get it going. Uh, so let's just make sure we have everything in first. Uh, let's just make sure it's all there. Okay, it is there. Feature is there. All right, let's try that again. 2200, 2200, Fedora admin, Fedora admin. All right, oh, let's see. I thought that looked a little funny. Okay, there we go. Sorry folks, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. That's what happens when you uh, start shuffling and cycling things over and over again to make sure you got it ready for a demo. So started out in an unclean state. Anyway, here we go. 
So you can see here on this uh, list, it will have already parsed everything apart and it'll tell you what's left to pull in. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. Where was I? Okay. There we go. I can calm down now. All right, everyone. So it is processing everything right now. Um, it doesn't take too long to run, but it does take a it does take a bit um, to pull everything over. And at the end of this, it's going to barf at me, and it's gonna it's gonna complain because I haven't set up my solar index properly on this on this development site. So when it's done here, it'll uh, spit out some stuff. But that's it. You can kind of watch it go by. Um, And it's already done. So here's the, the big chunk that it's working through now. It's actually going to pull over all the files, and then it's going to pull over all of the, uh, the media, which essentially lines up the files with the, with the objects. Um, so we'll let it go now. I. Let's see, we can go ahead and start looking at the site though while it's coming in. There go the files. So here we can actually go go ahead and check it out. Uh, so if we go back. To the site, this might take it a while, it's probably getting hammered. You can see we've got the content coming over. Uh, this one has made it all the way thus far. Um, so you can see it's pulled over the image. It has uh, maintained uh, the, the collection hierarchy. Uh, it has extracted entities from the mod's name element. Uh, and it's pulled over some other stuff, and it kind of lumps over all of the hierarchical, geographic, and topic, and stuff like that, um, and it and it plops it all into this one field called called subject. But it it does actually extract uh, everything out of it. And if you go to its media tab here, you can actually see it pulls over all of the data streams, um, the FITS file, the OBJ, you know, everything down to the the audit file and you know the DC and stuff like that. It will it will grab every single data stream and pull it over um, as is. Uh, and if we go back here, we can go to the parent. And if you check out the parent here, um, you can see we pull everything over, even if we um, don't necessarily do anything with it, just in the spirit of grabbing everything. You can see we even pull over the collection policy file. Um, so there. Um, so all of that stuff comes over. And so it's a pretty uh, just direct one-to-one -one migration here. So you can see the basic image collection has all, all this listed um, as its children. So it really just kind of slurps everything in that it can find. Um, so let's, let me go back to the presentation again, make sure I don't get too far ahead of myself. So we ran it and we checked out the results. So everything came over um, sort of as, as expected um, and on its way over, uh, a lot of stuff got deduplicated. So for example, all of those images, they were all published by um, Pexels. So let's go check it out. And so we can go and look uh, at our taxonomy terms here. So we can see we've created uh, this one entity here that's called a corporate body called Pexels. And that entity is referenced by all of the other nodes. So we don't uh, repeat or duplicate any information in here. Um, you can also see here, just, just to show you, here's the person ones. So all of the name types that are personal, 
type equals personal attribute. Um, those all got brought over as people. Type equals corporate all got brought over as corporate bodies. Um, and uh, all of the hierarchical geographic here comes over as um, as geographic locations. Uh, so that is very nice, but we can um, certainly do more. So let's go get some more. So that was just migrating over a single collection and a small one um, at that. But what I didn't mention was that in this repository, I have already migrated over other things. Um, so here is a royalty-free sample that I downloaded off the internet. Um, we also have uh, a video that also comes from Pixels of an airplane. And then uh, I also brought over one of my favorite books, such uh, great bedtime reading, uh, Camel in Action, for those of you who want to learn about Apache Camel. Uh, it's actually been a very good resource. But so I have some other types of files that we've preserved in Islandora 7, um, not just images. And so I am going to set this off um, on the entire repository and, and see, what, see what happens. Um, so uh, all we have to do is change the solar query. So what we're going to do is we're just going to change it to star colon star. That will migrate all the things. So we're just saying, give me everything here. All right, so star colon star, and we're going to save it. And so now we're going to rerun it. But an interesting thing about uh, Migrate is that um, it does actually cache some information. So after we change this, uh, that query, we have to clear our cache. And then if we want to go back um, and look at things, we can kind of compare some numbers here. So uh, for example, we created uh, 39 files in this migration. And in objects, we migrated over six objects, you know, one collection and it's, and it's five children. If I do this, go check it out, it's going to refresh all that and we should see um, different numbers. So now you see we've got 110 here um, with only the original 39, and instead of uh, six objects, we now have we now have 21. Um, so we've got some some more to do. So we're going to kick it off. We're going to do the same command as before. Um, if you run it with this flag here that says update, um, it will update everything, including that which it's already migrated over. But we're going to leave this off. So it's going to actually be smart about it. It knows what it's already migrated over. And so we're just going to kick this off, and it's only going to pull over the new ones. So we're going to do that. And it's going to run um, again for a bit. But it's going to go a lot faster this time because it is not going to do um, all of the migrations that have no new data, like I, I didn't put any, you know, new people or or publishers or anything on any of this stuff. Um, so really, it's just gonna slurp over the files and then apply all of the metadata, um, and that's it. So again, this is this is gonna um, run for a bit, um, but when it's done, we can we can check out all of the results here, and you will see we will have. All of those collections come over, plus all of those individual objects um, that I added, and everything is going to be kind of um, in the shape that we're expecting it to be. So trying to buffer here. I should have brought some, some nice waiting music, but if we've already processed the files, it's, it's for the most part, it's done here. Um, so let's go. We can go ahead and jump in early. So my poor laptop here is running 
two Island Aura VMs from each from from a different stack at the same time, and it's hammering the two of them. So uh, this poor guy is going to take a second to refresh, unfortunately. Here we go. So we kind of go back to our main content here. You'll just see the feed of everything that's been ingested lately. That's what you get by by default. So here you can see we got the airplane. We got the, the PDF. Um, not everything's been brought over, I guess. So we will actually get the thumbnail and, and everything uh, to come over. But so let's, and we get all of the other collections. So even stuff we didn't have, we still, you know, because I say grab everything, it will grab um, all the different collections and it will still grab their collection policies and everything. Um, so you can, you know, limit it down here. But I just wanted to give an example of, of what it looks like if you just pull pull up everything. Um, and here we can see our video airplane and not the movie because I put the exclamation point uh, in the title. Um, but there you can see everything comes over. Check out its media. It's got all of them. Fits, MP4, MKV, you name it. Um, so yeah, so let's see, just to keep my, keeping with the, the time we have here, 20 minutes. Um, so we took what we had and we kind of expanded the scope of our query. Um, so let's get to, I guess, what's gonna be kind of interesting for for folks, um, let's extract a new bit of metadata. Maybe not the most ecologically uh, friendly image I could find here, but it was royalty free uh, from Bexels, which is a great site if you're looking for, for sample demo content. Um, so we're not gonna strip mine your metadata. <laughs> we are going to extract it. Um, and so the way that this works um, is, at the beginning, I said you need to know what's in your solar index, and this is this is why. So you need to find the field you want to migrate over from your 7x's solar. You need to find its field name in solar. And then you need to go add a field to your content type in Island or 8. We're, we're going to do all of this stuff. And then you need to add that solar field to the migration and run it. So um, we can kind of go through all of this. Unfortunately, um, editing a migration um, involves writing to the YAML. Um, and so I said I wasn't going to hop into the box and do stuff on the command line. So I am going to actually pull um, this down through the UI. It's going to give me a zip and we're going to edit the file and then I'm going to FTP the file back to the server. Um, so that's the kind of the workflow we're going to do. And then once you do that, um, you can reimport the configuration and then and then run it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to find the field I want to migrate. So um, if we go back to this, let's just go back to these, to these images. Um, you saw in free smells here, I already put a genre in it. Um, ba -ba -ba, here we go. Let's get it. I believe I named the genre free smells. Sure did. Um, that is definitely not something from the, th the uh, thesaurus for graphic materials from the Library of Congress. <laughs> Anyway, um, so the genre field is here. I've even got it filled out because I didn't, I didn't clean it up from last time I tested. And so if we go check out our content types, um, you'll notice that genre is missing. So if we go to repository item, manage fields, um, we have nothing here for genre. So we're gonna pull genre over and we're just gonna pull it over as plain text. So we're gonna be kind of as, as naive as possible about doing this. So here I've got this, it has uh, a value. I am going to go check out our solar and I am gonna get the actual name of it. So, um, so I'm not guessing, uh, I'm just gonna query, I'm gonna query star star and I'm gonna say, give me, you know, a thousand results, give me everything. Um, and then I'm just gonna like control F for genre. Here we go, mods genre S, okay? So this is the field name in solar that we need. Um, I am going to add a field to our content type. 
So this is how you can make a different piece of metadata. It's called a field in, in Drupal 8. So we're going to uh, give it a plain text field. We're going to call it genre. Where it's going to be given the machine name of field genre. That's very important. We'll need to remember that for later. We're going to save it. And then we're going to tell it, sure, 255 characters. That's it. No, no longer than that genre. Um, and you're only allowed one genre. So we have this. And I'm going to very quickly, now that we created the field, um, you can see it here. I am going to go ahead and add it to the appropriate place in the form. Um, so here, it's kind of always put at the bottom, but let's say I want it underneath description. And we'll save it. So that goes in the form at an appropriate spot. And then here, manage display, we can do the same. So now it'll show up when you view the resource. And so I'm just going to slide this up to the top here. We're going to put it again. Uh, oops, going too fast. Sorry, folks. Do, do, do. OK, right under description. All right, we're going to save. OK, so now when everything, there it is. So we found what we wanted in 7. Um, we configured 8 to accept it, pretty painless. Um, and then we're, we're going to rerun the, uh, the query. So we're going to edit it to look for mod genre S. And we're going to tell it to put it in the field we just made. And we're going to go from there. So in Islandora 8, well, Drupal 8, um, if you go to config development, you can see here features. All of our configuration is bundled up as features. Um, and here you can see it will also, this, this UI, basically it collects configuration for you and it even shows you the differences so you can, you can see what you're doing and it lets you kind of reset everything from the configuration you put on your server. But here you can see we've changed everything. Um, it's all star colon star and I changed all the ports to be, to be our ports. Um, and I want all of that. I don't want to undo anything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the config as it currently is from the site. And I'm going to click this download archive button. And so it's going to give me a zip. And I'm going to extract the zip. That does not look correct. Let's try that again. Refresh first. Now let's try that. Okay. Well, lots of fun stuff happening today. Okay. So we'll do it another way. More than one way to skin a cat. We'll just do it straight onto the box here, but again, not through the command line. Sorry about that. Despite having done this several times in a row, uh, always, always something on a live demo. So anyway, not a problem. I will go pull out this single configuration. So features helps make all of this um, a bit smoother of a process, but nothing wrong with it here. So here we go, Islandora objects. That's the one we want. This is what gives you all of the metadata and such. So I'm just gonna copy it over. And then we are going to re-import it sort of as is, except I'm going to make some very small changes. So here in the file, in the source plugin, you tell it the field name in Solar for what you want to get. So here under description, I'm just going to copy and paste this chunk and We're going to call it genre. And it was mod genre S. So this is how we pull it out from Solar. So that was the source plugin. The process plugin is actually what puts it on the field. So we're going to do the same thing here, 
except this is very, very simple. And so the field we created was called field genre. That was the, the machine name of it, and then genre. And that's it. So that's all the text editing you have to do. Um, we're going to re-import this. Confirm. Hopefully I've hit my allotment of gremlins for this demonstration. No whammies. OK, yeah, ready. So now that we have re-imported this and it can um, knows and it has the information for extracting the genre, I'm going to rerun just one. So here's uh, I'm going to say dash dash update, and then the name of the migration is this island or object. So I'm going to run just that one migration over. I'm not going to rerun all of them. And I'm using this update flag to tell it to update um, the things it finds. So it will overwrite the uh, option. Whoopsie. A little bit out of order here. Let's try this. Whoopsie. I'm having lots of fun now. Ah. So sometimes when you change some things, uh, it doesn't like it unless you clear the cache. So I'm going to do that. And we will skirt in just under the time limit here. So hopefully I'll have some time to answer some questions for you folks. Um, I like to make sure that there's always Always time for that with these webinars. Let's try it again. What did I do wrong? All right. One last chance here. Island or uh, objects. Does it have what I gave it? It does. It does feel genre, genre. Okay, this, this should work. So let's clear the cache this way. I'll give it one more shot. All right. Let's just look. Okay. Let's try it this way. We're going to use the uh, the UI. So this is the same exact thing I was doing with Drush. Here it was migrate import. Here I'm saying update. So let's do it. Let's see what happens now. All right, it liked it now. All right, and when this batch finishes, it will report back and tell us what it updated. Hopefully it will say it updated 21 correctly. There we go, 21 updated. Um, so let's go check it out. Uh, if we, we just go to content here. I believe it was free smells. Here we go down here. Here, here we go. So we see we have the, the genre. The genre does, um, does come over. You can, See it in the form here as well. Whew. Okay, folks. So always, always lovely doing demos like this. Um, you never know what you're going to run into, but.
we did get it all eventually. So, so that's it. That is the, the basic process. So you can run it all and it'll grab all your data streams and stuff and get what it thinks is like, you know, a basic attempt at getting your metadata out. But then um, it's sort of up to you to edit that one object's migration in order to make it match kind of the metadata that you have and, and also the, the other ones for extracting, you know, like people, places and stuff like that. Um, but it's pretty easy. What you do is just really you just the same thing. You just line up the, the field name in solar and then you make another entry and you say and then put it on this field. And when you're doing XML, it's the same thing, except instead of a field name, you're just saying, hey, take this X path and then, hey, go put it on, on this field. Um, and that's it. So if a lot of your metadata is flat, you can very easily and quickly get everything um, over. Uh, it's it's still requires some input from you and from your organization. Of course, we can't just uh, magically figure out everything, but we can get the majority of the dirty work done for you and leave you this kind of space to work in. And that's really what this project is, is trying to just give you the space to customize this and to, and to do it yourself. Um, but okay, all right, we have seven minutes, so I am going to step back and just let people ask questions if they want to. All right, we had uh, one question that came in during the last little bit of that demo, actually. Um, could you give us a quick reminder about why we're using features and not Composer? Okay, so because they're used for two different things, so we're, we're using both. But right now what we're doing for um, Composer is we use it to pull down the files and it will actually pull down the feature for you. But then once you have it on the box and you're working with the features, um, we use that to be able to quickly make changes and provide kind of a better experience when you're working with configuration. So you saw what I did there, which was this gross thing in a text box on, on the UI. Um, and what I wanted to show you was you can use features to export a zip of all your config, then you can make your changes and put it back. And then when you put it back, it will, it will you use features uh, to re-import all that configuration for you. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful tool and it normally works quite well. Uh, it just was giving me a bit of a hard time today. Happy to take more questions. You can type them into the chat or use your mic if you like. Oh. Go, uh, new question. Uh, does the deduplication for generating entities, for example, people, normalize out punctuation or is it doing an exact string match? If we have a URI in the at value URI, will that be taken into consideration when doing the deduplication? It can. Um, so right now what it does is, uh, as you put it, it, it's very naively just directly tries to match those strings. So if there is punctuation or some subtle difference, it's not, it's not going to know. Um, if you have something like, you know, a URI for, a subject heading that's like authoritative, um, you can use that as like the key instead of the name. So you can tell it to look for that and not look for the name that might have different punctuation. Um, and then it will deduplicate appropriately. Any other questions? There we go. Uh, clarifying on the features question, is this essentially done to make it more user friendly and less command line slash developer oriented? Yes, that's what we're doing slowly but surely as we go through all of this is we're trying to push more and more through the user interface and, and, and out of the command line. Um, and unfortunately, you still have to hop in there to run some stuff, but our end goal is that you would, other than using Composer to pull down this, this module from from GitHub um, or packages, um, everything else will be through the user interface. So the features will go through. You can manipulate the config and 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 see the differences when you import it and change one files and say, I just want this versus that. Just give me these changes and use features to do that to provide a better experience. And then we also um, the user interface here for actually setting the settings um, is very new. 
and as as much as we can feasibly push into the user interface to make it a better experience for for non-developers we can that's what we're going to do okay i'll take a quick procedural question uh, someone has asked if this webinar will be available as a video later it absolutely will i'll be putting it up on our youtube channel along with links to the slides and anything other useful information we have um, that should be done today or tomorrow uh, another question for the group, uh, is there any interest in setting up a migrations interest group so we can share experiences and such? I guess this is much for the, for the attendees as it is for you, Danny. Sure, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think that's for the folks in the crowd. We at the foundation are always happy to help people kind of organize and collaborate and get together. Um, so. If there is interest in it, we will we will gladly help shepherd that process forward. So you, it can be you know incorporated in the Elendora community. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Okay, here's one for you, Danny. Uh, so as I understand it, the Island Islandor Eight really only uses Fedora as a file system. Was today's demo and pull from Fedora to Fedora? And if so, could you also migrate to a flattish file system? Yes, yes, and yes. All of those things. Um, so um, Fedora, well, it does more than just use it as a file system. So we do use Fedora 5 as a file system. That is the main way that the user interacts with it. Behind the scenes, um, we do flush all of your, your metadata out about files. And even the files that aren't stored in Fedora have their metadata stored in Fedora and we kind of point out to them. It's like using um, redirects or, or external content in, in Fedora 3. So, so we do that. Um, but you're not limited to it. You actually set in the destination for the files where everything goes. Um, and in that, I basically tell it to go to Fedora. So this was a Fedora to Fedora migration. Everything that was in the Fedora 3 wound up in the Fedora 5, all the files and, and data streams and stuff. You don't have to send it to Fedora. You can send things to different places. If you wanted to just put, um, if you just wanted to put the stuff that you can't regenerate into Fedora and just put all of the derivatives somewhere else, you can do that. Or if uh, you're just using some other file system or like AWS or something like that, you can, you can send everything there. Uh, what is the status on multi-paged content, uh, the newspaper module in Islandora 7, for instance? So that is a tweak that I wanted to do, but I didn't want to press my luck. Um, and it's a good thing I didn't attempt it because uh, I had some unfortunate difficulties during the demonstration. Um, but the way it works right now, it needs basically a little tweak. I need to do a little tiny tweak to this in order to get it to tag things appropriately on the way in to basically flag things as paged content on the way in. Um, and then when it does that, it will actually pull over a book and we'll pull over all of the individual pages and we'll create the book, you know, parent object. Um, and, and I have to see what I would have to do for display, but in theory, all of that stuff would kind of sort out and then you would get it. Once we get all the pages in and you can query for them, then we can generate a triple IF manifest and then you can, you can look at it with a viewer. Um, so we're incredibly close, you know, like what you saw me do to pull over all of the objects, um, all of that would hold. And then it's, um, if it ran against a book, it would pull everything over. It just really needs to tag those pages as pages and that top object as a page content object and then you would get it. Um, now the rest of the stuff like the newspaper interface and, and stuff like that, we, we don't have um, that done yet, but the actual content itself can be can be pulled over. And, well, and page content is now supported in Island or eight. Um, just migrations that need tweaking, right? Correct. Yeah, that is correct. And, and in fact, the way it comes over is already really, really close. Um, you know, there's not a ton of modeling difference between seven and eight there. Um, even though it's all Drupal-y and stuff, it is still essentially the same. 
And so it, it, yeah, it really comes down to just tweaking it. I just basically need to slap some taxonomy terms on the way in and that's it. Is there an estimated timeline for that? No, but I could probably do it in about 10, 15 minutes after this is done. I just didn't want to, I tried it out yesterday and I saw where I was going and it's like, okay. And I just wanted to make sure I had everything else good. Um, but soon, you'll see that very soon. Do we have any other questions? Okay, looks like that's it. Okay, all right. Well, thanks for thanks for bearing with me, folks. Um, I hope this was informative, kind of show you the state of the tools as they are now, and we are we are getting better and trying to make it easier as easy as possible uh, to get you migrated over. Um, so if you, if you want to give this a shot, uh, you can pull down the code from Packagist and, and play with it, and this video will be available um, so you can consult it. And of course, you can always just hunt me down um, on email or, or Slack uh, and corner me, and I will, I will gladly answer all your questions. So anyway, I hope you guys have a, a wonderful Thursday, and I'll see you later. Thank you, everyone.